Welcome to the guide to conversion rate optimization. People do conversion rate optimization because traffic is expensive. If you're able to produce a site, a website, a landing page that has a 7% conversion rate instead of a 3% conversion rate, you're basically making two times as much money with the same amount of traffic paid. So you wouldn't even call it life hacks. It's more like fundamentals of internet marketing, fundamentals of converting a person who doesn't know you into a paying customer. Okay, it's very, very important because nowadays traffic is becoming increasingly expensive and people who don't do CRO in the first place are losing out big time. Okay, so uh, this is a big subject, but it's very, very easy and simple to understand. It may be hard to implement and execute, but uh, for you, it's easy to understand. Okay, so use this as a master guide, this document and stuff for all things CRO and best practices. But uh, I'll go through uh, the elements of CRO with you as well as break down some of the landing pages that I think are doing a very, very fantastic job so that you can just look at what your competitors are doing and just emulate them. All right. I put here, uh, see what the top docs in your industry are doing and go analyze their web pages. Okay, these guys have spent like millions developing them already. Okay, so don't uh, don't reinvent the wheel. Just take what's working from them and just imitate them. Just literally take all their R and D and just uh, yeah, use it as your own. Okay, so um, elements of CRO. Let's just get right into it. All right, so number one, people normally do CRO based on product page or landing page, right? It's a very very um, optimized page that uh, drives the customer to do one thing, a singular focus, drive customer to purchase or an action. Okay. And an example of that would be this website right here, formtest.io. This is their landing page. As you can see here, you literally cannot do anything. I'm clicking all around, but I cannot do anything else. There's nothing that's distracting me from the singular focus of entering my website to get to my next step, which is they are going to help me test and analyze my forms. So this is a very good example of how a singular focus of the landing page, you should never allow people to make more decisions than one decision. And that's very important. That's something that people uh, realize, uh, don't realize very often. By doing less, you're actually doing more because you're getting more results from this page, right? That's only one option for the person to um, do, which is put their landing, uh, put their contact info inf information in. Okay, same thing for a landing page like Zoho, what they run. As you can see here, you only can put in uh, your information right here. You can't even go into the other pages. As you can see, I, I can't press anything. Uh, if it gets started free, it gets me up to the top page. There's literally no other option for me to go out. That I, I only can convert into a customer if I'm interested in this product right here. Right, so for example, if I'm running Google Ads and I uh, drive traffic to this page, I only can collect the lead. Okay, so that's for a lead gen business. All right, so cut out all the unnecessary things and ask yourself, will this drive my customer to the purchase? So everything you include in your landing page, right, is very intentional. There is nothing that is being wasted. It's time and space of the customer. You're paying for that traffic. So don't waste your time and get right to it. Show them the value that your service or product is giving and put it in there. All right, so that is basically um, that point right there. Cut out everything. Reduce friction to the call to action, right? So make it very easy for the call to action to be done. So as you can see here, I only can, I can click here. I can't click any, anywhere else, right? Then uh, after scrolling down, it's easy for me to get, to get back. It's easy for me to go to the purchase, right? Uh, it's re basically reducing friction as much as possible because people are lazy like straight up people are very very lazy and you must give them the path to least resistance to the purchase right by by doing that you're removing the thinking aspect of it and you're able to convert much much higher all right next one would be website copy so speak about what you can bring to the customer and not about you okay let's uh look at something else okay check out this landing page by market hero they are an email marketing software okay so if you can see here Check out the copy. Build a $1,000, $5,000 per month business in 30 to 60 days. It's very, very specific without any investment or experience. Um, very, very specific. Uh, they understand their um, target customer. They understand what it, uh, the product brings to them. And it talks about what it brings the customer, which is ROI, profit. Right? It doesn't talk about the product itself. Right? Only afterwards, then they start talking about the product and what a market hero actually is. But... Um, just like that, all the website copy should be like that. Okay, so, um, so for example, okay, let me see. Okay, so, full market hero access, right? This may be a headline, 
But how, how do they sell the product? They sell it by automate the entire business for passive income, right? To me, it, when I read this, it's speaking to the customer. It does not tell me what the product does. It tells me what the benefit is, what it actually does for me, right? So always want what's in it for me, right? Next one, uh, full inter opt-in access. I have no idea what, what is inter opt-in, but they tell me immediately through this subheadline, automate getting traffic and leads instantly, right? All the words automate, the word instantly is uh, very appealing to the customer. Right, so website copy, everything should be intentional. Everything should be speaking to what the customer wants and their pain points, not about you, not about what the features is. Ah, sorry. Right, so clear call to action buttons. All call to action buttons should have high contrast, easy to press and optimized for mobile. Right, so high contrast and easy to press is, uh, I mean, quite self-explanatory, right? Very big, easy to press, high contrast uh, against a purple background. Let's see here, conversion lab. Easy to press, as you can see, so much real estate right here. So easy to press. Uh, my eyes just direct to this. Uh, my eyes, my eyes, orange, orange, eyes, eyes. All right. And that is what I'm getting. Uh, easy to press. Yep. Self-explanatory. And optimized for mobile. So what that means is the call to action button should be super big. Should be uh, stretched out all the way. Okay, that was... Okay, so... In a mobile setting, it should stretch to the width of the mobile phone. If it goes to the iPad, for example, it should stretch. Okay, so it's not iPad optimized, right? I go to the phone, it should stretch all the way to the width. It should not be some small button right here. It should be very, very big, easy for my thumb to press. Easy for my thumb to press. Okay, so that is that for call to action buttons. Clear call to action button at the bottom of the page to re remind them how to buy. All right, so as I was saying just now, as you can see here, I could put my lead information in here. And then when I scroll down, there is another option for me to a call to action at the bottom, right? I don't want to have to scroll up all the way just to fill up my information again. And that's what I mean by reducing friction to the purchase. You make it super easy for the customer to, to do just that purchase, right? So scroll up, right? So there should always be call to action buttons in between as well. That would be good. Uh, let me see uh, which other, um, let me see, does Conversion Lab do this? So we have call to action buttons in between as well. So anytime that I want to go up, go up and uh, put my contact information in, super easy, right? So if I put here, I need help design, immediately opt-in form comes in and I am opted in, all right? So that's it for clear call to action at the bottom of the page, reminding people how to buy instead of, uh, because people are lazy, instead of people uh, scrolling up, you give them an option to easily press. All right, next, social proof. Every landing page has social proof. If you don't believe me, check out every good landing page, of course, right? So uh, let's check out the social proof here. Credibility is important, right? So, um, okay, so this one doesn't really have, that's uh, quite interesting. Okay, this is social proof, right? This senior marketing manager is saying something. That's a case study right here, right? These are the results they've gotten. Uh, yeah, Market Hero does it very well. As you can see, social proof. Uh, people posting on Facebook, so real comments, real likes, real shares, very, very credible. Let's see whether Zoho does this. Okay, so maybe Zoho is a very, very big company, but okay, 150,000 businesses, right? Social proof, more people saying good things. Yep, so you can't get my point. Let me show you in an e-com setting. Uh, social proof is very, very powerful at the bottom here. Look at this, amazing, fantastic reviews of the product. Uh, actual images of the product itself allows me to really see the product in action. Fantastic. This this is uh, very, very good. Okay. Objection handling, social proof, education, and FAQ. What this means is when you're trying to close the sale, close a purchase, right, via a landing page, you need to handle all objections, right? If I am unsure of about, about product, I'm able to actually uh, allow and convince myself without any human interaction, why I should buy this product, okay? So that is really in the form of an FAQ where people uh, are answering, uh, the person who has created a landing page basically answers all of the objections that you could probably have. All right, so I'm scrolling down here and seeing which landing page actually does that. Um, let me see. All right, so you can see here, this is e-com as well, e-com selling golf clubs, all right? This is a product page. So this is social proof. Oh, sorry, this is uh, objection handling. 60-day guaranteed refund. 
why would you love your new whatever? Who are these designed for, right? Uh, let me see if I can find another. I think I saw it. Was it on Conversion Lab? Um, the FAQ. Sorry, just give me one second. Did I see it just here just now? Okay, so never mind. Yep, it was this. Yep, so as you can see, Ecom frequently asked questions. Uh, what's what's up with this power bank? How do I charge my devices? How does it work? How many times will it charge? Right, the bag, size of laptop, capacity, everything that I've ever wanted, everything I've ever asked about this bag, I have it all answered in this FAQ. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, next, engaging useful videos. Okay, so the product should be focused, but people present. What this means is when you are making engaging or useful videos on your product page itself, you should always include people if possible, right? So as you can see, uh, this brand does it extremely well. Uh, they have product focus, right? Everything is about this bag. You can see the several aspects of this bag, but there are people present. The reason why people being present is very important to convert is because it actually shows people actually using this product and not just you trying to advertise it, right? So it adds a credibility and additional social proof, but it also shows how a person would be using it, right? So people present, um, let's see what else, people present, outdoors, nature, people, people. It's really great when there are actual people and there are faces as well. That will be absolutely fantastic. It's your product, people are using your product and their face. Usually they're happy, that they'll be even better. All right, navigation and site structure. So in terms of navigation wise, uh, a landing page itself, right? It'll be good to have no uh, navigation around, right? It's, it's trying to reduce all distraction as much as possible. But if it was e com wise, uh, it's okay to have um, all of these tabs right here. Okay, so that's navigation and site structure. Push notifications. So push notifications is when you come onto a site and they actually have a pop-up or a plugin installed to get you to install notifications. And let me show you an example of that. So um, as you can see here, digitalmarket.com. Uh, once I scroll through around 75% of the page, they have this notification, push notification, asking me whether I want to subscribe to a notification. Uh, so they're going to come and bring me into their email list if I say yes, please. Okay, so that is meant to retain traffic as much as possible to bring traffic that you have bought into traffic you own into your email list or whatever. All right, page speed. Page speed is super important. Okay, so you can go to gtmetrics.com or you can go to uh, Page Speed Insiders, uh, Insights by Google, and you run the Page Speed test, right? GT Metrics is actually a very difficult, um, I would say the, the, the metrics on here, once you load up your site, it's usually slow. And the great thing about GT Metrics, I feel, is their um, waterfall. So you actually can come in here, if I press Analyze, and okay, Google has Google Page Speed Insights as well. You can use this, right? And you just put in your URL into this form right here. And then you can get insights about your actual page. So this allows you to analyze what is happening and what are the choke points in this funnel. So, I mean, Google is fantastic, right? I love GT Metrics because you can come in here and go to the waterfall and you can literally see what is holding up the choke points, right? So Google is a fantastic website. Obviously they're getting an A, but your website is probably not. So you can probably come in here and see what is the choke point. So uh, the ones that are very long uh, latency, uh, those are the choke points that you should identify and then remove them or change them in some way to increase page speed. Uh, this is actually a ranking factor when you're doing Google ads, especially. Your page speed is actually part of your Google ads they will identify whether your page is fast, optimized for mobile or not. And if it is, then they'll actually bump up your search rankings. If not, then they'll reduce it. Same for SEO. If it actually is fast, your page uh, rankings will actually go up, right? So these are the two tools that you can use, GT Metrics and um, Google PageSpeed Insights. And then you can literally see some of the suggestions that they have given and then uh, implement as is. So. As you can see, you can literally just identify what is the problem and then go and fix it. Okay, that is for page speed. Next, exit intent pop-up lead magnet. This is super important and let me show you what it looks like. An exit intent pop-up is when you have, you're leaving the page, okay? 
and then you actually move your cursor towards the tab, towards closing this browser, okay? And what happens is there's an exit and 10 pop up that comes up and this will basically allow you, allow the, the marketer, allow the brand to capture your email in some form. It's important to actually implement this because if you're paying for traffic, you want to maximize the people who are actually coming into your funnel. And the only way I, I guess people who are on your site already and are planning to leave, it is best to capture the email in some way because you know they may not be so interested and it may, they may be the last chance for you to capture the information, right? So Ryan Dice here, digitalmarketer.com. You can see, uh, save up to 90% on our best selling products. For the July sale, right? Extremely enticing. Let me see what's up, right? So before I left their site, I've become sort of into their funnel and gone on to another site. So this is the landing page I saw just now. Yep. And then as you can see here, they're trying to upsell me something, uh, the course right here, I guess. And yep. So normally what happens is Exit Intent will normally offer a discount, for example, 10% off discount, and then you put in your email and then you get it, right? So this is a, a different type of Exit Intent, but that is what it is. Okay, super important because um, you're paying for traffic, so you might as well get the most out of it. And the last one will be introductory pop-up lead magnet. This is optional because if you already have an exit intent, you may or may not want to put an introductory pop-up lead magnet uh, because um, it may be too spammy, right? It may seem like the site is too spammy. So I would naturally um, suggest this. This is an option, optional choice, but you may definitely use it as well. Let me show you what how it looks like. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Uh, this is an e-com store selling bags, the same site just now. And they receive 10% off your offer while signing up now. Okay, then the email address and opt-in right here. So this is what happens when I visit the page for the first time, right? So I don't want it and I can go and continue browsing. Okay, so that's about it for conversion rate optimization. Every page is intentional. Every word on your website is intentional. Uh, don't waste people's time. Let them know what's up. Let them know how you can transform their lives, make their lives better through your product or service. And these, all these uh, resources are available in this checklist that you have uh, used right now. So please use this uh, as the master guide, right? Use this as uh, seriously uh, as much as possible to really increase your conversion rate, all right? All of the links here that I've put and I've shown are all in here as well. So you can check it out as well, all right? So let me just go through here. In every single niche, it's the same concepts. If you're in a different niche as a uh, software agency, uh, e-com, like literally any other niche, these are the same elements and you can implement them into your product pages and landing pages. All right. So this is an agency selling conversion rate optimization. All of these are extremely good, by the way. That's why I show you them. Right. So as you can see, this is market hero selling email marketing software. Same concepts apply, social proof, uh, video, engaging video, person, people present, Zoho, uh, software as well, uh, lead generation, contact information here, everything super clean, social proof, call to action at the bottom, formtest.io, um, this one is, um, I'm not very sure what this is, sorry, but very clear call to action, digitalmarket.com, exit in 10 pop up, and the site is generally quite good. Yep, life. Uh, so got e-com selling bags, physical product, uh, extremely good landing page as a product page. Uh, as you can see social, uh, credibility, trust badges, um, people present, uh, good copy, additional social proof, credibility, call to action, um, frequently asked questions, so extremely uh, good social proof, social media reviews. All right. And then as you can see here, call to action back to the top. So I don't need to scroll up and choose to order now. Okay, uh, last one would be this very simple selling golf, golf clubs, e-com. Same thing, social proof, um, photos. Okay, they, they definitely can improve this by, uh, this definitely can be improved by the way. You can put in uh, more images about people actually using the product and stuff. Yeah. Um, Okay, sold out, uh, trust badges, FAQ, customer reviews, uh, additionally, upsell, buy more. Uh, credibility, credibility. All right. Yep. So you can see, uh, conversion rate optimization is just convincing the customer from a person who doesn't know you into a paying customer. That's all it is. It's laying it all out there and letting your customer understand the value of your product or service. 
All right. I hope you've enjoyed this video and seriously implement all of these elements into when you're building your landing pages or product pages. And I'll see you in the next video.